guys, that's Dorota Palicka International, nail artist and educator here again. And I'm in with Terry. You have seen me doing this set of the nails, so they last really well again. And we are going to do the rebalance on those nails. So I'm just going to file off the product from the nails. And I'm using my e-file as a key 38 file just to remove any product. I don't think so there will be any lifting and the cuticles area is much nicer now because Terry have been applying the cuticle oil. And we are going to go for some blue set for a change. We also need to make them a little bit shorter just so they're nice and comfy. It was a really nice autumn set. It's a shame actually to file it off. And if you didn't see um, this tutorial, like how those nails have been created, you can just go back and watch. Uh, there is a playlist called Salon Nails. So I'm just removing the gel polish and they actually fab there is no lifting so far which is absolutely awesome yeah and the foil looks so nice like especially when the lights reflect on it I think we choose the blue color as well because Terry got a really nice beautiful blue scarf <laughs> so it is going to match her scarf so when I'm filing the product off like I really want to file away any lifting I mean her nails are perfect so there is no lifting it's going to be a really quick rebalance and thin out the free edge a little bit because if we shorten the nails that mean like uh, they will become thicker because that's the structure oh it's so beautiful it's honestly it's a shame to take it off so at the apex area and around the cuticles i'm only really removing the gel polish and then at the free edge i'm thinning it out a little bit So I'm trying to do like as many tutorials as possible as well to put some extra videos guys for you just so you can enjoy it and have something to do. Again it is a salon video so I'm really sorry if there might be some noise in the background or a wee bit of the out of the focus. I'm really trying my best with the camera setting and all. the last meal I'm trying to kind of keep the same pressure all over so I don't create holes when I'm removing the product uh, and this way it is much easier to do the rebalance as well so clean the dust Clean all the dust. And then we are going to push back the cuticles. So 
I'm just using the cuticle pusher to push them back. Quite firm, but not too strong, like you don't, you don't want to damage those sensitive area. Especially that this part of the needle is really kind of softer. That's where the cells are not fully keratinized and they are like really easy to damage. But your cuticles are so much better than the last time. No, so I see I've been good stuff on them. Good, while. good, very good. And you, you can really tell the difference. Mm -hmm. uh, so keep advising your clients to put the cuticles oil on because it does really work. Now, just before I start filing, I'm going to clean the, um, any cuticles which might be on the nail plate. So I've got my e-file and I'm filing one side, just the cuticles which are on the nail plate. Here is a little bit more. And then put my uh, e-file into the reverse setting. And do the other side. I keep checking like how the things looks in the camera. <laughs> Perfect, and now we're ready to file it. So we need to file it uh, any kind of uh, lifting, any any places which we need to blend in. So I'm just removing the corners, like the rough corners of my file. I always do that. And we're going to reshape those needles and remove the bulk of the color from the free edge. So I'm filing from underneath, just like this, to lift the nails up. Because once they reach that certain length, uh, they start growing down and you really want to kind of improve the shape of them. So always filing it from underneath. Then blend everything in here. Scratch the surface of the natural nail plate. And this nail is ready for the fresh product application. another one so I'm shortening them a little bit filing from underneath and blending the gel with the natural meal look also how I'm holding the clients um, new folds I'm really pulling them down so my file doesn't touch them
and another one usually the index fingers grows the strongest down so that's why you have to lift them up I'm relaxing Terry's hand a little bit <laughs> And I really need to try to straighten this needle as much as possible. Kind of lifted it up. Go from underneath. Also, you can see the cuticle doesn't go even. So I'm trying to push this side more than I would push this side because uh, it goes kind of at the angle. Another needle, lifted it up. I had some good questions actually in the comments and I mean guys like I'm trying to read all of them and uh, obviously now it's quite busy uh, with all the comments I'm really happy for you to putting them in so we have split with Patrick and Patrick is going to answer some of them as well and I'm going to answer some of them as well but I'm thinking actually it will be good to do some kind of Q&A uh, where I'm going to pick up best questions and uh, then answer them in those q and i videos where maybe we could think even doing it live and um, and uh, okay i swapped different new and um, we could do it live just so um you could ask me more questions and i will pick up the most interesting ones because they have been really good ones like see one of the question was why are you filing the news like this well you can see i'm sewing one side other side where you should file one side so I think this is amazing question. So the filing one side is a kind of like a new myth. And we all had it, like I have been saying it to my clients as well for years, but it is proven by the science that it doesn't matter if we file one side or we sew into the new, it doesn't affect, there is no changes, um, no changes to the structure of the new plate filed this way. I think the myth comes from that the new plate grows like a fish scale-ish. So the tail stands up first and then they lie once they reach, like, once they're growing. And if we would file the nails this way, we kind of lifting the scales up and then we make the nails to split more. So the filing in a one way would more kind of reflect into filing down the way the nails. And that's basically what I'm doing. You can see me like brushing going like more down the way. Even if it looks like this, we still kind of tend to file more of the more of the down down the way. Um, and this way you are not lifting the scales of the nail plate. It's same like you would tap the fish and if you go into wrong direction, you would lift the scales up and the same things apply to the nail. But it's never to the free edge. It's more filing from the top and I, f I thought like that was an absolutely fantastic um, fantastic question um, so I wanted to answer this question as well because yeah it's a really really good one now I have skipped this new because it is really strongly growing down so I want to kind of show it to you more into the detail file from underneath like as much as you can file from underneath and the needle doesn't shorten too much what it does is like it's, it's really changing the shape like going a bit straighter rather than growing too much down it's good also to twist the client's hands as well so you can see the side view so always remember the needles aren't flat like they, they aren't one dimension you have to check them from different angles from the client view from from the side view so this way you can shape them much nicer don't concentrate only on the one one view and then you can find a like a happy happy balance on those meals mm -hmm. 
That's it. And the next one. Yeah, but I think those Q and I's are going to be really, really good solutions. So um, I'm not sure how often I would be able to do it. Um, obviously, because of the time, like working in a cell and then recording the tutorials as well is kind of time consuming. So but I will try my best. <laughs> And the thumb so again I'm lifting it up and really those filing from underneath like has changed so much of my shaping and the way the client's nose looks That's great. So that's my nails all prepped for the product application. I'm going to remove the dust. And clean them with the blue scrub. So I've got some wipes and the blue scrub, which is a nail dehydrator. And I'm just going to nicely clean them. Another tip I can give you when cleaning the nails, concentrate more on the sides of the nail because by accident you're always going to touch the middle. So if you really take up and, um, pay attention to the sides, you are always going to have a good prep. Okay, now an extra nail dehydrator. And I'm applying it only on top of the natural nail. It doesn't need to go on the extension part. And now the gel. For a change, I'm going to use the soft pink one. And because Terry's nails are so good, I'm going to do a really kind of quick infill. So my nail prep has dry and now I can apply the Universal Airborne. So again, it is only going on top of the natural nail. Now I've got the bottle which is almost at the end so before each use I tend to put it upside down and sometimes it gets stuck in the lead. And then the gel. So I always like to keep a wipe on the sides so where I can kind of like, uh, if needed, shape my brush. Pick up a small scalp. And what I'm doing is applying a nice and thin scalp of the product, wrap in around the free edge. So by pressing this hard, like I'm rubbing in around the free edge. And on the sides as well. And that was uh, another question I had it like do you don't cap the free edge I do cap the free edge and I do it now now this is my free edge cap this is my free edge cap when I'm when I'm wrapping my brush around and why is important to cap the free edge it is important that the product is wrapped up around the nail so this way is like not going to chip and I always like to explain this on the piece of paper when you've got the flat paper lying on top of the flat paper it's easy to catch it but if you've got one paper like wrapped around the other paper it is much harder to to catch it 
Oh gosh, I hope I have explained that well. <laughs> did you understand, Terry, what I, I mean? Judge. You did, yeah. <laughs> so I hope, guys, you did understand that as well. So I have cleaned my brush because now I want to have a clean surface and pick up the scope of the products. Now, it is pretty cold in here. I've got some mans doing some wet walls and they are fantastic. They're so quiet because I'm doing recording. So I think we should really appreciate them and, and say thank you to them. I can hear them like um, whispering, Wh whispering, oh yeah. So I'm picking up like a very small scope because all I need to do is I need to just fill up those places which have grown with the fresh product. And because it's pretty cold in here today, I can do probably all five nails at the same time. And you have seen me working with the gel in the summer months when I was like, put the product in like two seconds and, and that's it all leveled and everything. So now the product in the winter months is slightly different behaving. You have to really more massage it. So here I've got another one. Sorry, I'm trying to keep the focus in. So a small bowl because we need to fill up this space. You can see the gel doesn't move as much. I have to massage it and keep moving the gel. And uh, I don't like it. <laughs> I prefer the gel, which is so runny. It's much quicker to apply it. So another scalp. And you have to really massage it. Probably on the afternoon time when I will be having like doing another clients uh, the product will be warmer so it will have a better consistency. But then I believe they will be out there some new technicians which are actually preferring those type of consistency of the gel. Um, I definitely prefer much uh, runnier consistency. So I don't have to massage this long. But I still tr try to kind of work with my technique where I'm putting the product one side, other side, one side, other side, and then dragging it down, then remove the excess of it. Okay, and so, and we are going to do exactly the same on this hand. So nice and thin layer, and this thin layer I'm always pressing really hard into my nails. I also another tip I can give you guys is. Depending on your clients hands temperatures like some clients got really warm hands some clients might feel it cold They will have colder hands and Terry's hands are pretty cold today as well. So even if I pick up the gel, which is isn't as um, as uh, Solid like as thick consistency then with the contact with her hands It will go more solid and same if we pick up the gel, which is um kind of runny, no, solid consistency, and someone has really warm hands, the gel will start run anyway. Now I have to watch the pinkies, because look how the pinkies mm, goes into the side. And I made this mistake with the first pinky. Um, the, the product I should apply, this is a good tip for you guys as well. I should apply a nice and thin layer on the pinky and then more product to the left side. So by the time I cure it, the product will run to the right side. And that's what I usually do with the fans as well. Like I kind of thinking of the gravity, which is going to drag the product on the one side. And uh, I tend to apply less product on the side where the product might run.
Okay, so another small scope of the product. Just to fill up the apex. Okay, so I'm getting rid of my product from the brush and keep the contact with the product all the time. Each time when you lift your hand up from the, when you lift your brush from the product, you are introducing the air bubbles. And another one. So when we're doing also infills, you kind of need to check where you have to place more product, where you have to place less product. It depends how we file it as well. Like this one is almost hardly any product in. I will have to still file the free edge. Now the pinky, the situation I was talking about, that the pinky jumps onto the side a little bit. So I'm not going to put as much product to the right side. I'm going to put more product to the left side just because by the time I finish the farm, this product will move a little bit. And this farm is really, really nice. So we just fill up the gap and the apex. And that's it all done. Change. So I wouldn't do it this type of infill on every client, but because her nails have been perfect, like I could, I, and I didn't have to fill up much. Was it how many weeks it was? Okay. Five weeks or something? Is it? Four or five weeks? I'm trying to think. You were in through the beginning of the week, and now today's Friday. No, so it will be a half. So it will be a half. No, it's a monster rotor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they've been on for a really long time. Terry thinks about a month. Yeah, definitely a month. Yeah, it could be four and a half because she was on the beginning of the week. So, mm -hmm. and we never booked you sooner than four weeks. So yeah, about four and a half weeks, I would say. Now, um, but still, I wouldn't do it those kind of infill on every client, but on Terry, yes, I can do those type of infill. Uh, because uh, because her nails was all perfect and intact. What I'm doing now is when I'm filing straight, straight, so I can indicate some lines where my file should go. And then this way I know how to file the free edge. And then once I've got the free edge filed, I'm just going to blend around everything around the cuticle area. just so it's all and nice everything around the cuticle area and basically i don't have to do any more filing on the snail just the buffer i'm going to show you on a couple more so nice and straight nice and straight and this way i know where it's not straight so i can start straightening it up blend everything around the cuticle area and those blending make my nails last if they really get blended here that's why they are not going to lift Okay, I can check the shape and I'm checking the um, Terry's hands on different directions as well because sometimes when the clients hold the hand they can put their finger into funny shapes and if we file all the shapes the nails are going to be misshaped as well. I'm checking how even it is and I'm, I'm really happy actually with those nails. I don't have to do much filing so that is perfect. Okay, blend that out around the cuticle area. So on Terry's, I have break my 
record on doing the kneels. But you remember when we were laughing and it was 34 minutes? Yes. Can you believe, guys? 34 minutes. Yes, 34 minutes mm -hmm. to do the rebalance, like so, to file the color off, put the fresh gel in, and apply the gel polish with a quick design. 34 minutes. <laughs> and they was looking nice and pretty because Terry's got a nice and pretty nails. Uh, but yeah, that's that's that was my lady, which I break the record on. <laughs> and we didn't plan it. It just came. I don't know how it happened like but it did happen uh, I think it was kind of a summer it must be a summer time because I'm much quicker it was summertime yeah Terry confirms it was summertime so uh, the reason for it it was just the gel application is I ha I'm much quicker with the gel and a summer yeah so it was a kind of summer um, summer months uh, because I'm much quicker uh, now I had the video to stop as well so after I have filed it what I'm doing is I'm taking the buffer and then buff it all over so protect clients folds so you can buff it kind of quicker so I'm buffing much quicker and I don't have to worry that I'm going to cut the client oh sorry <laughs> um, and um, now the summer months, I'm always working much faster with the gel. I mean, obviously it was the summer last year um, when we break the record. Terry is a client of, for the last few few years. Um, but anyway, we are buffing all over very quick. And then I'm taking a buffer and slow down. So at this stage, I don't want to hurt the client and I'm slowing down. I might even push back the cuticles a little bit more and I'm perfecting the shape. So I might touch it up on the side. I might straighten it up a little bit. And same on this one. So very gentle buffs. And this is for me a very good time saver, like when I can buff it so quick without of worrying that I'm going to cut, cut the client news. And then I can slow down just to perfect the shape. And also when you've got so kind of clean application around the cuticle area, the gel polish goes on much nicer. So I'm doing the same in here. Everything has to be blended and the sides are really important as well. Sometimes even when I file with the buffer and I already finished file, I might take the file and I might touch up even more. Okay, so this all has to be blended. You cannot leave any kind of wee bits and pieces, but the, the, the buffer is really sharp. So I'm very gently filing now the sides. And then I still want to kind of like, you know, like almost no touching, like be very gentle and, and play with the shape, just so it's much nicer. Touch up. You don't want any catchy places at the sides, because again, that's where the problems could start. And then another one. So just exactly the same. It's actually quite nice. and quiet today in a salon actually in general guys like I think uh, it just went so much quieter um, much quieter and I don't think so the salon have been ever as quiet uh, I bet you all kind of getting affected a little bit as well it's not an easy time for any beauticians and uh, <laughs> any beauticians new technicians uh, makeup artists like uh, any kind of beauty industry really affected there is no weddings going on no nights out no holidays nothing like so people definitely tend to get less treatments done i hope you coping okay with that and uh, i think maybe it will be even nice um, if you could give some ideas to other to other beauticians nail technician what kind of sorts of extra income they could uh, get like I don't know maybe a home knitting or mm, Christmas decorations like you know if you if you're a new artist you're usually good at art so you could do some maybe Christmas decorations and sell them in the 
local like buy sell swap groups uh, you can just write any kind of ideas so the other girls can read it and maybe put down their ideas too just to help kind of like find an extra pennies coming in now that's all my nails buffed and then the next step is just to clean it any dust which I've got on the nails so I'm just cleaning any dust and finish off the tidy up of the cuticles and after that we can uh, move on into the color application I'm just going to quickly finish the other hand as well so you don't have to uh, watch twice the same stuff so I'm pushing the cuticles back to me two millimeter cuticle nipper and I really like it because it's so nice and precise I'm never doing too excessive cuticle work so just whatever is needed as a minimum to be honest but uh, if you have watched the previous tutorial I'm sure you have seen Terry's cuticles and you could see them now they are much better condition like much better and cutting is not also like a good if we overcut it the body kind of sends the signal to the cuticle tissue that's it is damaged and it needs to grow more like you know when you cut yourself the body um, start producing more cells to heal and that's what is happening with the cuticles as well so you don't want to overdo it you're really removing like an uh, dry parts rather than um, removing like an living tissue because that's where you could create some scarring or like over or like overgrown cuticles so don't don't overdo it okay so that's my nails and cuticles that's why all my nails prep and the cuticles uh, done as well i'm just going to take a tiny bit of the blue scrap push the cuticles back again clean the nails and they're ready for a color application so i'm going to do it exactly the same on the other hand and then come back to you okay so that's all the nails ready for the color application and we are going to apply some beautiful blue um so that's the swatch of blue uh, color I think it looks amazing. Now, as you guys know, like I've got some joiners like doing some wet walls here as well. So I will be kind of uh, sometimes maybe stopping the video if there will be too much drilling. So I'm pushing back the cuticles just before painting the color. And it's a really nice blue color. I've already painted the thumbs uh, just to save you time watching one extra nail to be painted. So this is not going to be anything like over the top, but it's nice and elegant design. I actually really like this color. It's lovely. Uh huh. Have a jumper that color. Yeah, you will have to wear this jumper <laughs> now. So, because of the shape of her cuticle in here, I'm not going to put the product as close to one side because I want to kind of keep it nice, new shape. Okay, and now on this finger we are going to paint it not full finger so I'm using a back of the form sticker and just put a tiny bit of the product actually the quickest way to do it would be painted first with the brush the normal size brush and then just perfect it so I want kind of like a wave shape so this is much quicker way of going than going just with the small brush and then I'm going to take a small brush and with the small brush I'm just going to touch it up some places ok 
Okay, and I wanted it to go nice and wavy. Even a drop more on the top. And then this painted nails cured it. And do exactly the same on the other hand. So just a wee wave. And then touch up. Paint the other nails. Perfect change. Okay, and here we are going to do exactly the same again. So the reason why it did happen, what happened with this nail, like it kind of peeled the gel polish a little bit from the sides, it was that the blue scrap wasn't dry 100%. And I have applied the color. Cut the free edge nice and close. Again, cut the free edge. So paint the wave nice again. Do exactly the same on this one. Oh no! <laughs> okay, so I've got the design all smudged. <laughs> so to fix it, because it's already cured, I need to touch up those places first. Cure them. Actually good, that's happened. Yeah, so instead of removing, I'm just touching up, first of all, only these places which have been smudged. Change. Okay, so we're just going to do sweet swirly part. 
I really like the fact that we've got the small window here. So. I'm painting like a wee swirly part first. And then I want some places to be white on top of the blue and then I want some of those white places to be uh, in the clear part of the nail. Okay, and then another one. So this one is going to be like a wheel leaf. I'm joining them three together. And then I have showed you guys like uh, that you can easily kind of twist the client's hands as well to paint it the way you need it. And that's what I'm doing the now. Okay, so I have created like a wheel leaf. Join these places up. Then I want to paint another one on this side. So just like a wee squiggle. In the middle part I will place some gems. So nothing over the top like... So the gems will be coming in here. We might actually do a small part there as well. I'm sorry guys, it's those wet walls here. And then a couple more squiggles. So it is nothing over the top. And the last one. Okay, not the last one. I need some more balance in here. Perfect change. I love that. Yes, yeah, so it was just like an. It's beautiful. We squiggly white design with a couple of gems. So now on this hand, I'm just doing exactly the same. And because we have touched up those places, uh, you can see it. The places which has been having marks, they're not uh, visible anymore. And that's the best way to fix, like, if something like this happen. So 
sorry, I had the phone call going on as well in here. So we wave. Patch up the design just so it is nice and even. And this way you can also fix the shape of the wave, but you don't have to spend as much time as you would do it with the tiny brush. That's why I prefer it starting with the big one. Change. Now this is all ready, so I can place the gems. And for those gems, we are going to use the soak of base gel just to stick them in. So I'm just picking up a little bit of the base gel and going to place those wee gems in. And I think they just finishing off the design just perfect like. And the one more in here, just so it's not a straight line only. Perfect change. It's gorgeous. Okay, I'm going to quickly paint the design here as well. So some swirly beads, we squiggle, then other side. Okay, change. What I'm going to do, guys, I'm really struggling. So, I have just went away and I have put my paint on French gel on the piece of foil on the heater because it's so cold in here with the guys doing the wet walls. Um, that's the gel is really hard and it's quite hard to paint with it nicely. So I just put it on the heater and uh, it should allow me to paint much easier. Now here I need to just apply the top coat. So 
So don't apply the top coat on top of the crystals, just go around them. And if it's needed, you could use a small brush. What I'm doing now is I'm checking how the top coat is lying and is there is no fluffy bits and pieces or any kind of dust uh, on top of the needles because this is really important if there will be any bits and pieces sticking out or bits of dust it just doesn't look nice and obviously when we filing the clients that's the piece of dust when we filing the clients needles the dust is lying for a long time around and it may land on the client's needles, so you really don't want to do that. Perfect change. Okay, I'm able to pick up my piece of uh, back of the form and paint the design. And the gel is much softer now, so I shouldn't be struggle as much as I did with the first first one. Terry is quite difficult while I end for holding the hands pretty stiff so I'm trying oh my goodness that's so much better so you can see how the product is behaving now how much nicer shape I can get just because I was really struggling and that's because it is too cold. Mm -hmm. Actually, all this tutorial have been pretty difficult. <laughs> Isn't it, Terry? We have to stop it quite a few times because yes. we ran out of the space in the camera. And uh, yeah, it wasn't easy. But yeah, we, we kind of manage. It's actually freezing guys here. You really wouldn't want to be there today. I think they just keep opening the doors quite a few times, so... Okay, and I've got another one finished as well. I can apply the top coat straight away on this ones. And uh, there is also a good uh, question as well, another one just at the end of this uh, video. So you have guys asked me about the um, uh, wiping the client's hands with the baby wipes and does the top coat doesn't go dual. And uh, yes, you are right actually at it. I'm so sorry for the noises. You are right at it. The top coat might go really dual if you touch it it's straight away. So what I'm always doing is before I would touch the top coat with the wipes, I need to wait a couple seconds uh, just for the gel to cool down. Gosh, the dust. Just for the gel to cool down. And I'm going to show you that change. So this hand is finished. And like usually I'm showing you how the looks look and then I would wipe it. So this couple of seconds make the gel polish to cool down. And I'm just using like kind of cheap Tesco baby wipes. Um, they are biodegradable ones 
and they are sensitive so don't use any kind of wipes which has some fragrances in it or anything like that uh, they really pretty good uh, so I will take the wipe and then clean the client hand and it wouldn't make the top coat dull just because it did manage to cool down um, and uh, that's what it is really a uh, helpful tip for you guys hiya hiya hello how are you good good you can have a we sit I will be with you in a minute so that's also my next lady just arrived as well so I have cleaned it Terry's nails and uh, then on this hand I will just apply the cuticle oil oh. cuticle oil and this hand is going to be finished and you can see it the top coat is still nice and shiny but just because I have waited those couple of seconds uh, before I have touched it with the wipes and with the cuticle oil so I recommend it uh, you doing that as well so on this one we have to apply those couple of the gems yeah. And then that's this new finish as well. Now I hope you have guys really enjoy watching this uh, tutorial. We have really struggled with Terry a little bit uh, recording it like uh, because of running out the space from the camera. Um, but uh, and the noises on the background again. Uh, but as I say, I will be posting those uh, videos on an extra day. Like so on Mondays, Wednesdays and Saturdays you will still see the really good quality videos and if, there, if I find something like during the post-production, if I find something like that's the video uh, maybe wasn't in focus or like there was quite a lot of uh, background noise um, or you know or, or it's not the best quality then I will post it, it on an extra days just so you can still see it um, how to do it. A design and you can still kind of learn quite a lot from videos and I think it would be a shame just to delay them and don't don't use them okay so that's the three couples gems put it inside freeze the base and that gives me a time just to quickly clean it uh, like my products and put them on the sides I take it back so I'm usually trying to use this time like for those extra kind of bits and pieces like tidy up and now this part is pretty time consuming because I don't want to go over the over the gems you can go around them quite a lot like applying quite even decent amount of the product but applying it all uh, on top of it is going to make the gems to lose its cuts and then we can just um, cure it and I show you the final results and then take a nice uh, thumbnail so a uh, picture so I hope you have really enjoyed guys watching uh, this tutorial let me know down in the comments below and that's how this this sets looks before taking pictures what else i'm doing i'm taking the wipe and i remove any excess of the cuticle oil like i don't like when there is too much of the cuticle oil it just doesn't doesn't look nice and i take this hand so i'm not going to touch this finger yet just because it is not cooled down but i can clean it easily the other fingers and apply the cuticle oil Yeah, and that's that's those that's those news finish glittery hacks and bye for now mm -hmm.